Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up? Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the college football gambling picks for week number 10. And I am pumped. I have been so bad this year. Uh, we'll go. Let's let's go on and jump into that. How's that? I went three and five last week. Lost one hundred forty dollars and ninety one cents. Chris went zero and six last week. Lost three hundred and twenty five dollars. Got blank. It's not good. No, no, it's sure not, and that's okay. On the year, I am twenty eight and forty four. I've lost twenty two point five one units. Probably not winning all of that back, but I will show enough try. You are twenty one and thirty one. Last week did not help you. Yeah, I was I was doing well. I was getting I was getting close to Mount five hundred. Yep. And uh and last week killed you. Got uh, down thirteen point six three units. But who did well last week? Stacy Lewis went eight and two in our football pick'em contest over at winningcureseverything.com. You can enter as well. He won a fifty dollar gift certificate uh to one of the steakhouses down in Tunica. And a twenty-five dollar free play, I believe. Uh, I mean, he's he's gonna go down and have himself a good time, or she. Stacy could be either, right? I guess so. Either way, I would assume it was a lady, but I'm not sure about that. It's, I'm so used to to guys entering Only this thing, but there are us. women. Well, the last two weeks has been a woman. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You're right. So either way, look go at look Gary. at me. Go ahead, Gary. Being Remember. being all. Sexist, assuming Gary. that it's only men that are gambling. Ridiculous. At Gary WCE. <laughs> you can join in to the festivities over at winningcureseverything.com. Just click on the football picks contest page and you can enter in as well. It'll take you a couple of minutes. Enter in your email, put in your name, and then make your picks. It's pretty simple. I don't have it up right this second. It will be up by the time that this goes live, but. Uh, yeah, go over and check it out. WinningCuresEverything.com. Of course, the show is brought to you by... Tunica Travel. Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. You can uh, you can find more information about their incredible sports books over at TunicaTravel.com. There you go. They, uh, they help out the show. They sponsor the show. They sponsor the football picks contest, etc. So go check them out. TunicaTravel.com. They've always got good things in the works. They got some fantastic stuff, man. I mean, everything down there, they are building it up. It's uh, it's fun. It's a good trip. If you are from out of town, fly into Memphis. Take you take your trip down. It's a it's a short drive. You're coming into game day. Believe that college game day. College game day. I don't think either one of us are picking that game this week. But it is interesting to talk about because well, it'll ESPN be on our big game breakdown. It'll be in the big game. Yeah, it'll be in the preview. So if you haven't listened to that yet or you haven't watched that yet, go watch the preview. Of course, for all the big games of the weekend. But yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. We will uh, we will be there. We will have signs up. We won't. My wife will. A big old winning cures everything sign should be out in the middle of game day. We'll we'll see if she actually holds up on that. Because it's supposed to be like 35 degrees that morning. We might not be there. <laughs> hey, I, we, we're going to be wearing some jackets. We'll be, we'll be fine. We'll be good. So, uh, tunicatravel.com. Go check them out. Go to winningcureseverything.com. We're on social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, podcast, YouTube, etc. You can find it all over on the website. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, make sure and click that like button. Make sure that you leave some comments, share the show out, tell your buddies about it. Uh, in the comments, tell us what you like about our picks. Tell us what your picks are and see if you can help us get out of this slide, man. Like we are having some trouble here. So let's go ahead and fire in. I've got eight. You've got five? Five. Five this week. Okay. Let's uh let's go ahead and fire in. I Can't will go 0 and 6 this week. Nope. You can go 0 and 5, but 0 and 5 ain't near as bad as 0 and 6. You got that right. Yeah. I'm going to start us off. Go ahead. I'm going to a Wednesday night game. So if you're listening to this on Thursday, Wednesday night. You've already missed it. Wow. Yeah. App State is a 15 point favorite at home against Georgia Southern. Now you would assume, right, that well, this is a rivalry game. It's always close. You know, do you think most people would know to assume that that's a rivalry game? Because I don't. Man, okay, maybe I just maybe I assumed too much. This is a rivalry game. Inform me. 
These I, I these two teams. Maybe they all know. When when they were in the I FCS, <laughs> <laughs> when they were in the FCS, uh, they were right. I mean, they were both winning national championships, fighting in the playoffs every year. Not at the same time, but okay. it, in the same every other year in the same thing? era. Did yes. North Dakota win like? Yeah, they won a bunch day? too so, and whatnot. But that's look, they've won a bunch over the years since they've left, right? Okay. So like, because I mean. So all of North Dakota's national championships are bogus because App State <laughs> left. See I'm there? not saying that. That's what I heard. Good gracious. Either way, App State and Georgia Southern are legit rivals. Like, they came over into the Sun Belt I together. I would have never known that. So that's awesome. Yeah, that so, does... yeah and it's uh, this is actually a Thursday game. I think it's a Thursday game. I think it's a Halloween game. Hang on. Check it out for me. I'm pretty sure it's a... I'm, I'm looking. Wait. I think the Thursday night game might be Baylor-West Virginia. You're making me. I'm sorry. I, I should have written this down. This is Conference I, USA, right? No, this is Sunbelt. I should have known this from You're the fine. start. Uh, and our viewers are just going to say, I've got Georgia. I've got the 31st. There, so it is. The, okay, so it's Halloween. It's Thursday night. Okay, so if you're listening to this on Thursday, which is when it's released, yeah, we got a game tonight. We didn't pick something that happened before. So you would think. If you'd have got it right, I wouldn't have given you credit for it. That is ridiculous. Everybody would have been like, you recorded it afterwards. <laughs> you would think that everybody would, it's because it's a rivalry, you think it's a, a close matchup, right? That would be incorrect. I'm getting back to game six. They have played five times in FBS. Those five games, the winner has been by 20, 21, 24, 18, and 20. App State opened as a 17 and a half point favorite. They are now only favored by 15. People are betting this down. App State has covered a bajillion in a row. I don't even know the number, but they are a covering machine right Sounds now. like a lot. Georgia Southern is not as good as they were last year, period. I think App State is ready for this one. I like them at home on Halloween. Short week. Georgia Southern's got to travel. Give me App State minus 15. I'm putting 50 bucks on it at minus 110. The Mountaineers, baby. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm tired of taking dogs. <laughs> you gonna roll with cover. the favorites like me? They don't cover. They never cover, so I'm betting against these crap teams instead of betting on them. There you go. Illinois is absolutely turning this thing around. The Black Santa Claus, Lovey Smith. I loved him in Chicago. Almost won him a Super Bowl. I was there with you, man. <laughs> and uh, and he's getting things turned around. I think he's got a quarterback. I think yeah. he's finally found a trigger man. No, guess, I think so. Guess where he came from. Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, Michigan, Brandon Peters. Who's struggling to find a trigger man. Um, they're laying 20 and a half points. But you know what? They're laying them to Rutgers. And that's not a real football team. <laughs> and when I say that, I want to say no disrespect to Rutgers, but I kind of mean all the disrespect to Rutgers. Yes. That I can muster. So I'm going to lay all those points. Seems reasonable. And I'm going to think that they're going to cover by three scores. That sounds good to me. So three touchdowns. I guess three scores would be 17. Three. Yeah, three. Well. Three scores is not enough. Three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. Enough. Yeah. Um, What, uh, what oh, are you putting 50 on? 50 bucks. 50 minus bucks. 110. Minus 110. All is of this, these happen to be 110. Is this at Rutgers? No, this is at this Illinois. Is, okay, it's at Illinois. Okay, so it's in Champaign. They're going to be partying in Champaign. I like it. I like it. Next up for me, I'm going to Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm going Arkansas, Mississippi State under 57 and a half. After Alabama hangs 45 points on a team, if the total is over 51 the next week, the over is 0 and 12. It's such a weird stat. That it's it definitely a weird stat, but. Wrong. Mississippi State having trouble scoring right now. And that's logic. These are the games where they are bringing back those things. So they had all these guys suspended, right? And they only get to play in four games a year. They are lining it up where they will get to play against Arkansas and against whoever else. So it's, it's, uh, uh, I'm Autry sure and Gay and whatever. So State's defense should be a little bit better. So if Arkansas can't score, and Mississippi State can't really score, then how are they going to get to 57 and a half points? 
I don't know the answer to that. But I See? was looking up. My computer's dead. It happens. I hate technology. Who imagines that, right? <laughs> Me, not liking technology. Um, so I'm having to play on my phone here. The money line for Arkansas is 240. 240. It's not a lot. It's not nothing either. Now that you're a... Hey, Maybe toss them in that round robin a little bit. Mm. I'm just saying. Hey, look, Arkansas State, is really bad. Mississippi State, I know they are. Mississippi State's having problems, and I like to bet against chaos. Oh, yeah. No, that makes Teams sense. Teams that are fighting amongst themselves. Yeah, but, but how really do we know like that Arkansas is not? See, I don't, and you're right. That Therein lies the problem is I've got two coaches that need to be taken out to that bridge in Fayetteville and just pushed off of it. Yeah. I mean, they might be able to swim. I'm not trying to kill them. I mean, no. maybe if they can't swim, that's you know. But th- this is why I'm going under fifty seven and a half. That's probably because I, I fully expect neither of these teams has been able to score much. Uh, so I would expect that they will keep this under that total. I'm putting a hundred dollars on it Ooh, at minus one ten. Looky there, looky there. Yeah. Hey, you remember when we were trying to figure out was Illinois on the road or at home? Yeah. But I'm gonna take my next pick, a big, 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 big favorite on the road. Okay. Michigan has gotten off the schneid. Okay. I called them beating Notre Dame last week. Yeah. Nailed it. Didn't didn't make it one of my bets. Probably should have. Probably should have. Oh, I did, but not on here, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> if, if it didn't happen on here, I tried not to talk about it because it doesn't really matter. Yeah. They're laying 21 points. Most places have gone up to 21 and a half. And this is at Maryland? At Maryland. Maryland started off the season with their buttholes on fire, man. They could not be stopped. I mean, they were just beating the doors off everybody who was really bad. Then they started playing some okay to good competition. And then just like every other year, they get the quarterbacks hurt. It just fell apart. Yeah. It showed it. And so I'm going to lay all 21 of these points. That makes sense. $75. I can get down with it. Minus one, two? Yes. I think Michigan is on a mission to prove we don't suck at offense anymore. And I also think that defense has is starting to come together and figure things out. They yeah, lost I think you're a right. lot of NFL guys. They While they have a ton of talent on defense, not a lot of those guys were starters last year. They're blue-chip athletes, but they weren't starters. And, and don't think that Michigan will stop – Running up points. Oh no! Here because, because that, of that little, how bad they've been. Well, no, no, no. That that little battle between Gaddis and uh, and Mike Loxley in oh, the no. off season. Man, I forgot yeah. about that. Sorry like shit. and and Loxley. Yep, you're right on that. Oh it, no! If Gaddis has a chance of sticking in, because Loxley talked a whole lot of noise when he was putting up 79 points against some high school team out of DC. Yeah. No, he sure did. No, you're right on that. If and and I'm gonna tell you this, I'm I'm gonna bet Gaddis has a few. Few bucks to sell out to the DC if they can keep them to, to nothing. To nothing. No, I believe that. I think this is going to be an epic destruction. You uh, you might be right. I also think Michigan has a lot to start proving. I think oh, yeah. they got a Harbaugh's about to get chesty. No, we we saw Penn State go in and absolutely demolish this Maryland team, and I don't think there's a big difference between Penn State and Michigan. I think Maryland got demolished last week. Oh, they did. And who they play? Indiana. No, 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 it wasn't Indiana. Indiana played uh, Nebraska last week. It was, that's right. It wasn't Who was it, great, Purdue? It wasn't a great, no, Purdue got smoked last week. Uh, Man, I should have all this stuff on the bed. I never do. Big Ten, where you at? Boom, boom. I mean, they got smoked by somebody. Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 52 to 10. PJ Flex Boys. Yeah, I, no, yeah. That's it. All right, next one up for me. Roll on, sorry. No, it's all good. Next one up for me. I'm going out to Seattle. The Utah Utes going to visit the Washington Huskies. And here's a little tip for you. The Bear tweeted this out. It's it's one of those long stats that, that you don't like. It's a trend, but it also fits into the, the team that I was going to take anyway. Okay. Since 2005... Top 10 teams that are favored by less than five against unranked teams coming off of a loss. One and 13 straight up and against the spread. Washington lost last week. 
They're still less than a five-point underdog against Utah. Chris Peterson has not had a lot of problems beating Utah. Just saying. And Utah is not as good away from Salt Lake City. Like that's I don't know what the difference is, but when they play in Salt Lake City, they are world beaters. When they play outside of there, not all that great. So while while Utah has looked like a top ten team over the last few weeks, they've also been at home. Going on the road, Washington catching three and a half. Give me the Huskies. I'm putting fifty bucks on it, minus one ten. I think Chris Peterson, if he loses this game, he ain't losing by more than a field goal. But I, I think Washington has a strong chance to win this game outright. I'll have what he's having. <laughs> same same pick, same score. I don't need the weird stat. The weird because trend. I, because I don't think it matters because six planets have to align for that to fall into place. But Utah, home and away stats are real. Those are true. Those aren't trends. Those are, those are stats. And Chris Peterson, still a really good coach. I can't explain. And they should have beaten Oregon. Yeah, I can't explain the weird season that they're having other than the Pac-12 is just drunk. Yeah. Just like like nobody knows what they're doing right now. But I know this. Chris Peterson, really good coach. There's maybe less than three or four coaches in the country where you say, you taking Chris Peterson or the other guy? And the answer is not. Chris Peterson. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Kyle Whittingham is a fantastic coach. I did, I, nope, no, 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 not dispersing Kyle Whittingham. You're talking, do I think he's a top five coach, though? If he's six or seven, he's still not where I think Chris Peterson is. Now, this is my opinion. Other people might disagree with that. That's fine. Yeah. But I think Chris Peterson is a hell of a football coach. Especially with a week to prepare. Yeah. So, I mean, because they, they, had, they had a bye week last week. And Utah did not. So next up for me, let's move into Conference USA. I love Conference USA so much. I don't love North Texas this year. They can't seem to cover anything. Did you early? Did I what? Did you early? Did I early? Uh, no, not particularly. I mean, I, I liked them to win their division, and I think they still could. Remember, I picked them to go eight and four. I tried to bet against them a couple of times. You kept telling me they're really good. Stay off that. Yeah, it's a, well, they they lost their. I don't, their, I they, don't follow they, some of these other conferences. They lost their offensive coordinator to USC, so that's kind of a big deal. Okay, um, but I mean, they still had Mason Fine coming back, and he is coming off of an injury. He should be playing yeah. this week. Good, but. Still betting against them. I'm betting against them. Okay. And and people are going to think I'm nuts. But I'm betting on UTEP. UTEP plus 24 right now at North Texas. I'm putting 50 bucks on it at minus 110. And I'm telling you, uh, UTEP has covered as a double-digit underdog like four straight times. North Texas has not covered as a double-digit favorite like four straight times. And this just continues the trend. This continues what's going on. North Texas, you thought that they were going to handle Houston when all the Houston's players started redshirting, and they got beat by like three touchdowns. And it just continues to happen. Now, North Texas still probably wins this football game, but not by 24. I think UTEP keeps this a little closer. Like, what they got going on at UTEP, like, they're they're not as bad as they have been. So I'm taking UTEP plus 24 here for 50 bucks. Last week, the Little Apple, Manhattan, Kansas. Manhattan, Kansas. Kansas State shocked the world. Took down Oklahoma. The Sooners. Boomer. See, last week, they played a posing team. A poser team. Yeah. A fake team. A wannabe team. This week, this week, they got to go to Rock Chalk Jayhawk. <laughs> Les Miles, the Hatter, as my coach, as my head coach. Now he took down a little school called Texas Tech. They're pretty good at football. Yeah, maybe. yeah, they're okay. I do not think that Kansas State is going to come into Kansas and win this football game. 
and I get a six and a half point head start. Give me seventy five dollars on the hatter. Seventy five bucks on the hatter. What minus one ten? Yeah, minus one ten. Seventy five bucks on less miles since less fired his OC. Went against his old ways. Brought in the new OC. Man, they were they were just a just a away from from beating Texas. Oh yes, they were. Then they pull up the upset against Texas Tech. I think they're gonna. I think they're rolling. I think. Well, they've uh, they've covered three straight. Yes. I so, like it, and they're at home. Kansas State coming off a big time emotional I, win. I, I also think, and it's not as this is not a knock on Kansas State because they're a really well coached team. Let me, let me actually give some some thought process to how I feel about these things. I kind of like betting against the the team that just pulled off the big massive twenty something point upset the week before because everybody in the country is looking at South Carolina did the exact same thing. Yeah, they upset Georgia, big massive upset next week. Everybody's piling on South Carolina. They get beat. Yep, they don't play good. I think the same thing's gonna happen. I just think that's a trend. There's a reason you were a twenty point dog to begin with, and and now. There's going to be a little letdown, whether it's emotional or whether it's just the price is too big. You're you're overinflated, whatever. Kansas State might still win this game. Everybody, Kansas has played everybody to a field goal since they made the change. Yeah, I have no reason to think Kansas State's any different. No, you're you're absolutely right. They lost to Texas by two, and I they will, beat Texas Tech by three. Kansas, um, Kansas will be in my money line. Uh, round robin. Round robin. No, I could no I could doubt. believe that. No doubt. I is in it the rest of the season. <laughs> All right. Before your last one, I'm going to give two right quick. Sure. Let's see. Let's move into the SEC. Okay. We got a little Conference USA SEC action. Everybody loves God, UAB. A great game. UAB is 6-1 and one on the season. Tennessee, not as good. Okay. Not as good. What are they, 3-4? and four? I think and so. they had that massive, massive win over South Carolina last week. Over South Carolina. However, UAB, look, they are 5-0 and against the spread as a road dog against group of five teams. You know what they are against SEC teams on the road? 0-2 against the spread. What teams have they played on the road? They, oh, as far as... That make what? up those two and zero. Oh, the two. Oh, the zero oh, and two. Uh, Texas A and M uh, and uh, Florida. Like the year that Florida was really bad under Jim McElwain. Like the year that Florida won only four games. Yeah, Florida beat them thirty six to seven. Okay. So and they were nineteen point underdogs in that one, and everybody, including me, was on UAB, and I was wrong. But look, everybody seems to think Tennessee is down in the dumps. That ain't it. They just beat South Carolina. I know. Who I know. That? But people still think that Tennessee is bad and that UAB has the players to be able to compete with these guys. And I just don't think they do. I, I think Tennessee absolutely mauls them by, it. look, 12 points. All I got to do is win by two touchdowns. I hope you win because we need to get some winners on here. But I, I know you don't like me betting against your boy. No, they're not very good this year. They, they, they look. Well, I mean, they're 6-1. They're and one. Yeah, but... They're, but they're they're not know, as good as they have been. Yeah, you but that's the thing. People love this underdog story from UAB. So this line, yeah, it's inflated. Yeah, it's it well deflated a little bit deflated, because of whatever. because of UAB. Regressed. But Tennessee at home, they are starting to come around. This defense looks really good. Like they played Alabama tight. I don't think people they think whipped up. Is trash anymore, Gary? I think nationwide people are thinking. They have turned a corner. Did we miss? Is your microphone? Did I just die? I think you died. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, but that's fine. Here, here, here. Look. First and swear and say all the things. What? There it oh, is. Oh, hey, I'm back. I bet it's going to die real quick, though. That'll be fine. We need to get through them then. All right, roll. All right, so UAB, Tennessee. I'm taking you Tennessee you minus 12. Can get my last one? And then it doesn't yeah, matter. go ahead. Go ahead. I'm dead again. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that is my fault. I apologize to y'all for that. Uh, let's go on and get Chris's in here. Uh, but yeah, Tennessee minus twelve, seventy five dollars at minus one ten. I'm all over that. Here is 
Let's see. Let's do Chris's last one. I'll let him steal this microphone real quick. No, you're good because that's ridiculous. No, they can hear. Just tell them. I'm gonna take this is ridiculous. No, you can hear it. It's good. It's ridiculous. Good. I'm I'm gonna take Florida in the cocktail party against UAB or against UTA against Uga. They might as well be playing UAB. What is ain't it? nothing. Overrated. <laughs> the the coaching discrepancy. Watch, I'm gonna they're gonna get crushed in this game. They're just gonna get crushed. I'm gonna look like an idiot. It won't make this fact not true though. The coaching discrepancy between Dan Mullins and Kirby Smart is is not close. It's just not close. That's all. Yeah, I could I could buy that. So Florida plus six and a half against Georgia. What what you got on? Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Yeah, you buying all in. Oh, I know. I just, I, I, I feel, you know, like this could, this could get crazy. Georgia could be saving stuff for him. So, all right, I got three more to go, and then we're going to talk to our boy TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. So let's fire into these quickly, and I, I feel like we could probably uh, fire these off quicker than we do anyway. But, uh, but we have fun with you guys, and and hopefully you enjoy watching the show and listening to the show. Let's go to Auburn, Alabama. I am rolling with Ole Miss. The line is now up to 19 and a half. Auburn has played some really difficult road games. They've they've had three road games in a row. It's tough, tough to deal with this Ole Miss team. They're coming off of a bye. If you think Rich Rodriguez hasn't found some some loops there, if you think Mike uh, McIntyre has not found a way to slow down that Auburn offense a little bit, you're crazy. Look, 19 and a half? I'm not saying Ole Miss is going to win the football game. I don't think they will. But could this be a 34 to 20 game? Could this be a 34 to 17 game? A hundred percent. I think that that could absolutely happen. I think that Ole Miss will find a way to score some points here. I don't think score, uh, Auburn scores a ton of points. So I think this will be a little bit closer than 19 and a half. Give me Ole Miss plus 19 and a half for seventy five dollars at minus one ten. I've got, next up, TCU going to Oklahoma State. I got Oklahoma State minus three here for 50 bucks at minus 105. TCU is 1-7 against the spread the week after Texas since they joined the Big 12. Look, I'm telling you, this is, this is a prime spot for Spencer Sanders and all those guys. Like, Max Dugan looked great for TCU last week. But Gary Patterson gets his players up to play Texas because they are always the underdog, at least in his mind, against the Longhorns, right? Like, that's the big major program, and we're just these little bitty dudes at this private school in Texas. Look, he gets fired up for that one. You don't get as fired up to go to Stillwater. Like Oklahoma State showed last week, they got some things left in the tank because they beat up on Iowa State. I like Oklahoma State, minus three here. I think they win this by at least a touchdown, if not more. And then finally, last game up, before we talk to TJ, y'all ain't going to like this one. Colorado State, coming off a big-time upset. They beat Fresno State by 10 last week. I think they're feeling good about themselves. UNLV is coming to town. UNLV is an eight-and-a-half-point underdog. I love the Rebels in this spot. They can run the football. They can slow down the game. They can make it dirty. Like, remember, this is the same team that whipped up on Vanderbilt. I think Vanderbilt and Colorado State are pretty similar. Uh, give me UNLV plus eight and a half here on the road. UNLV seems to play better on the road. I don't know what it is. But they, they look okay, and they're still fighting for their coach's job. I think they've got a chance to win this football game, and you're giving me eight and a half points. Give me the Rebels. Give me UNLV plus eight and a half. And now, while we are talking about doggies, let's go ahead and jump in with our boy, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter and the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, TJ Reeves. Every week, we've got TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Of course, you can get him on Twitter at BucksidelineGuy. TJ, how are things? You're, uh, I'm, I'm assuming... You got home fine from Nashville, right? You uh, you are correct. I was there in your region, north of you in Nash Vegas. Unfortunately, did not work out well 
for my Buccaneers. It worked uh, out well we for the hometown we were, we were, team. Did did work well for the Titans. Good to get the Titans healthy and fat and feeling good about themselves in a win. So I, I know we'll talk pro football later on, but I am back and you cannot see me even though on your on your simulcast on your YouTube show we can all see you guys. <laughs> but I am I am sporting the Memphis blue here because now that we're talking college, we're talking game day ESPN's pregame show coming to uh, uh, call me Memphis, Tennessee, my hometown, my alma mater. Uh, I need to. I, this might be biblical, Chris Giannini. I might need to consult the Book of Revelation to see if the world is coming to an end. The moon turning to blood. The the Cubs winning the World Series. Nicole Kidman wins an Oscar, and Game Day comes to Memphis for Memphis and SMU. <laughs> We're both excited. We're both sporting the Memphis blue. Oh, so. absolutely. No, we're we're stoked about this. It's it is a really really big deal and you know for those that don't really understand what it means uh they talked about the Washington state did a poll on when game day came to their city you know coming to your city uh they did that last year for the first time game day did and they got over a billion social media impressions just <laughs> off of their appearance on game day like that advertising well, is irreplaceable like you just no can't question. you can't buy it. So well, and it's a it's a four hour college football fiesta, a commercial, and they're yeah. originating it from obviously your locale and talking constantly about it. And you're right, you can't put a price on that. And sure, they're going to be talking on that pregame show about the Florida Georgia game and on and on the different you know matchups across the country, all the way out west. Uh, you're going to ask me, I'm sure, about USC and, and Oregon a little bit. So different different games will be subjects, but they're going to keep coming back literally and figuratively to Memphis and the matchup with SMU, and that's just tremendous. I mean, I remember being there in school in the 80s, and, and we were lucky if we were relevant uh, for more than a week of the football season. Now, like, like the football season would be over in September because, because oh, yeah. there'd be two or three Tiger losses, and you're already looking for the basketball season to get started up with practice and with the games. Oh, 100%. Now, now yeah, there's anticipation with Penny Hardaway and the basketball coming, but hold hold the phone. 7-1 and one Memphis, 8-0 and oh SMU is a large deal in the American Conference and in the grand scheme of things, because if SMU keeps winning, they might be a party crasher here out of the American uh, for the college football playoff, et cetera. We'll see. Uh, we will definitely see. No, I'm I'm stoked about it. Memphis, you know, with Rip Shearer and, and back in the day, Spook Murphy, all, all of that stuff. This was an also-ran program. Like, at 10 years ago this week is when Tommy West had his rant where he was saying, if you're not going to do anything to make it better, just get rid of it. And now here we are right. 10 years later, Justin Fuente turns this thing around. You know, Mike yep. Norvell is, uh, I mean, he is just, he's something else. He's something else. This team is a lot of fun to watch. They are unpredictable, insanely entertaining. And, and last and, week was all of that with ooh. the Tulsa game and the field goal. And let's just go over this I, real quick before they tried we to get kill to the me. picks. <laughs> well, let's get to the let's let's get to this real quick before we get to the picks and the leans. We saw it uh, in the Tulsa game w- with Memphis. We saw it in the Bears game in the NFL with the Chargers. Unfortunately, my Buccaneers the same thing earlier this year in the loss to the Giants. You're in field goal range. You have time on the clock. You have a play or two to play with, including a timeout. Why do you not try a low-risk throw to the back of the end zone to see if you can score a touchdown, draw a flag, something? Uh, none of those three teams did it, and all three of them missed the field goal. Oh, yeah. And I know... Uh, well, I, Oregon did it, and, and Oregon hit, right? Oregon hit their, their field goal. But it drives yeah. me insane when you have an opportunity to not rely on a kicker. Just go for the end zone. like it make, Just once. Yeah, to, Just use once. the players not, that got not you... Down the field. We're not saying be unnecessarily careless and try it multiple times, but there's no harm in trying it once to see if you can get the touchdown or get the flag. I don't hear Chris weighing in on on this point very much. Chris, are you Mr. Conservative on this? Play the field position, play the clock? No, this, I agree. And this is, this has been Gary's soapbox for a long time. Gary, Gary has beat this drum for a long, long time, which is you, you, these guys, forget everything that got them where they're at. <clears throat> and they just say, okay, we're in field goal range. 
He's made it, and, and sometimes, at least in the Tulsa game, the guy was really close. Sometimes, I mean, they are just across the line of, of the guy has made it here once or twice, and so we call this his field goal range, and, and it's not a consistent make, and, and they're satisfied with that because they're so afraid of negative plays. So many of these coaches are, are coaching to not lose instead of trying to coach to win. I believe that every week, and it drives me insane, drives Gary insane, but this is something Gary's been beating on for a couple of years now. At, TJ, you remember the, the Kentucky-Florida game. I mean, at Kentucky oh, had absolutely. that game one. And they, they, yes. they, they yes. were moving the football, they get to within field goal range, and then they run the ball into the middle like three straight times to set up a field goal. Like they're trying to run clock to set up a field goal that he missed anyway. I mean, it just <laughs> it drives me because they passed the ball all the way into field goal range, and then they run it three times when they know they can't run on Florida's defense. It's just yeah, it, it's mind-boggling. It defies explanation, kind of like what we do with our underdogs. Although a week ago, I did give you on this very program, I did give you TCU against the Texas Longhorns. Yes, you did. Let's chalk one up for Three Dog Thursday <laughs> on that one with a true freshman quarterback. And thank you, uh, Shane Bouchelle, for throwing the ball to the Froggies about four or five times in that game with the interception. So not, no, not we'll Bouchelle, uh, 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 Ellinger. Sam Ellinger. Oh, yeah, Ellinger, excuse me, Bouchelle was the, I'm confused, Bouchelle was there, and Bouchelle's the SMU comeback, you're right, you our quarterback, it. you're right, Ellinger is the one throwing it to them, and, and the luster is off the Longhorns uh, right now at this point, because shoulda, coulda, woulda, they shoulda, coulda, woulda lost to Kansas, uh, as well as losing to Oklahoma and LSU, and now did lose to TCU in that game, so a lot of the luster off the horns, and yes, Ellinger with the interceptions, uh, last week, Bouchelle is the transfer for SMU and has looked fantastic getting out of the Texas oh, yeah. program. So there well, you go absolutely. on that. Uh, let's go ahead and move into some leans here. Let's uh, let's start off with some guys that you've been on a few times this year. FAU is getting two points at Western Kentucky. Now, <laughs> I know you on... love the, the Lane Kiffins. <laughs> I have been on them, and I have been incorrect. And I obviously have not learned my lesson because I'm going back towards that way. Again, I really like them on the road at Western Kentucky. And both of these teams now have something in common. They both lost to Marshall, WKU losing to Marshall last week. There's a question mark for both quarterbacks in this game. Uh, But uh, FAU is an explosive offense here. Uh, a good spot on the road. They beat uh, Western Kentucky on the road a couple of years ago, and it was a different coaching staff. I, I, I'm going to take a strong look at that. I've not gone Conference USA uh, for a game, a conference game on Three Dog Thursday, but I may be leaning that way I could, this uh, week there for Kiffin and the uh, and the Owls. I can understand it. Kiffin's doing a good job. I mean, they're five and three this year. They uh, they look pretty good so far. Um, now another one, and I, I'm just guessing because you're going to be on the West Coast this week. Let's uh. Give me some ideas about Oregon USC. You know, Oregon gets the comeback win against Washington State last week. USC does the same thing. Come back against Colorado. They get a late, you know, late score to win the ball game. USC, a four and a half point underdog at home against Oregon. At, which way are you thinking here? I am headed out to the West Coast, and this has traditionally been one of the best West Coast matchups over the last 10 plus years including when Lane Kiffin coached briefly at USC. He was there, right? Oh, yeah. A little bit. Or have they completely blotted him out of the record at this point. We want no remembrance of Lane you, Kiffin at USC. You can't block my memories. <laughs> <laughs> so he was out there. Um, and uh, and so Chip Kelly, obviously, with Oregon. And uh, it became quite the rivalry. So they renewed that rivalry. And Oregon still very much in conversation for Pac-12 championship and an outside shot at maybe getting in the conversation for the college football playoff, depending on what else happens. This, this though, is a spot where it will not be easy uh, in the Coliseum. Uh, USC, very explosive. This is how old I'm getting, guys. I'm just becoming get-off-my-lawn guy. I'm becoming old. That The son of former Buccaneer running back Michael Pittman, uh, Michael Pittman's son, is the star receiver returner for USC. Am I that old? I cannot be that old. <laughs> that Michael Pittman from my Super Bowl 2002 Buccaneers, his son is running around making plays for the Trojans, but he, he is a stud, playmaker, explosive uh, receiver and returner. I, I, I take a strong look at USC. I've gone to them a couple of times, once against them against BYU, but I went with them against Notre Dame on Three Dog Thursday. I may be going back to them 
in the Pac-12 showdown here. Uh, but we'll have to listen, of course, to Three Dog Thursday. Now, before we get you out of here, you're in Florida. Mm-hmm. The big, big, big ball game this weekend. It national title implications, SEC East title implications, SEC championship possibly implications. Cocktail All party. Above. Uh, Florida, Georgia. Florida's getting six. <laughs> I uh, thought it, you were going to say next a lot of alcohol <laughs> implications. And yes, you yeah. would be correct on that too. Now, Brother Giannini, what is that, six? I saw it was five or five and a half. Is it up to six now? It's the, uh, six and a half right now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, in, you know, in this case, Florida with that defense. Uh, that is attractive as well there in the don't call it the cocktail party game. I can tell you this. I have got several uh, big-time Gator uh, alum and uh, friends and hardcore fans that will be making that trek, and, and, a, and a lot of them will not remember much that happens beyond about Friday afternoon, I have the feeling, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, for this one on Saturday afternoon. So uh, it, it is always fun. It is always heated, and Georgia has gotten the better of them a bunch in recent years, so uh, we'll see what what Dan Mullen can do here in the in the rivalry matchup. Because you're right, uh, this is like the old pro wrestling. Uh, here we bring it back to Memphis, and Memphis being such a big wrestling town and being featured this week. Is Jerry the King Waller going to make an appearance on game day? He we has see to. If that's the case. I would we, assume we might have to have the king have to have the king out there. But this is like the pro wrestling loser leave town match. Whoever loses here is basically not only out of the national championship picture but even out of the SEC title game picture because of the tiebreaker. So it is like loser leave town, Georgia, oh, yeah. Florida. Oh, right. absolutely. It's absolutely loser leave town. All right, you, you, can, uh, you can find him on Twitter, at Guy. TJ, tell us a little bit about Three Dog Thursday and what, uh, what people can find over there. Listen, I love picking underdogs, college football, and the NFL. You guys are gracious at coming on. We share space here on your show on Winning Cures, and you guys come on with me. Brother Giannini will be on with me picking some underdogs. On the podcast, we have fun with it, college and the NFL. Um, I, I look forward to the guests that we're going to have on every week to give insight and analysis. We get handicappers on as well and make some underdog picks. It's a lot of fun. So wherever you can find those, uh, wherever you get those podcasts, find Three Dog Thursday through iTunes, through Spotify, through Google Podcasts. You can go to threedogthursday.com and find out more about the podcast. And I always appreciate being on with you, boys. We look forward to another big weekend. Yeah, you know we appreciate you as well. We will uh, we will talk to you again next week. Thank you, boys. All right, we appreciate TJ being in here with us, of course. We already told you, Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can get it anywhere. Go subscribe. Tell them how much you enjoy our show. You can find us as well on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Go and hit subscribe. Make sure you review and leave some nice comments, all that kind of stuff. Subscribe on YouTube, share the show out, tell all your buddies about it. We appreciate you guys being here. Of course, we will talk to you again. Well, first, tunicatravel.com. Go check out tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi brings you the show every week. They uh, they are fantastic. Uh, Go and check them out. They're the South's premier sports gambling destination. they got six incredible sports books. Tunicatravel.com is where you can find more information about all of them. And, of course, Winning Cures Everything is where you can find everything about us. WinningCuresEverything.com. Whew, what a week. What a week. We need some winners this week. Tell us what you got in the comments. We will see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at WinningCuresEverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.